this section, we'll be talking about ADHD comorbidities, or things that tend to go along with ADHD. This is a very important aspect of ADHD that I think is overlooked by a lot of doctors. Conditions that go along with ADHD. The most common of these is anxiety. The anxiety can come in a few different forms. Generalized anxiety, this is where I'll tell families in, in questioning, you know, if the child tends to be anxious about almost everything. It can be social things, school related, even some specific phobias. Specific phobias in themselves can be another type of anxiety seen with ADHD. Things like snakes, spiders, bees, the dark, earthquakes, tsunamis, specific um, phobias related to school at times. Can have social anxiety, just anxiety with social situations, and then panic attacks. All these are commonly seen with ADHD. OCD-like behaviors, commonly seen with ADHD. So it can be like cleaning, checking, sorting. Uh, cleaning can be like the being a germaphobe, frequent hand washing, um, not wanting to get any other part of their clothes dirty. Uh, checking and sorting are other symptoms of OCD-like behavior that goes along with ADHD. Oppositionality is an important one, and this is seen often in the setting of explosive behavior in younger children. Can be confused and, and may go along with things like impulsivity. Uh, conduct disorder is more serious, uh, worrisome sort of behaviors like lying, a real antisocial behavior like uh, a criminal act activity. Autism spectrum disorders, such as Asperger's and high-functioning autism, can go along with ADHD. Core symptoms being social difficulties, language delay, having restricted interests or repetitive behaviors. Other sorts of mood disorders, childhood bipolar, major depressive disorder. Tick disorders like Tourette's, commonly seen in kids with ADHD, and also has some implications with treatment. For example, stimulant medications may bring out ticks or may make ticks worse. And then intellectual disabilities, formerly known as mental retardation, may go along with ADHD. Now the reason it's important to recognize these comorbidities is that families will come in often very frustrated, especially if I'm a second or third opinion. They'll say things like, I went to see one doctor, they diagnosed my child with anxiety, with the commonly comorbid or things that go along with it, ADHD symptoms, and social difficulties. We went to another doctor. They told me my child had Asperger's with ADHD symptoms and social difficulties. And now you're telling me my child has ADHD with anxiety and social dif difficulties. At some point, we have to step back a little bit, recognizing that many of these things go together. And at this point, we can't make a clear diagnosis. Now what we hope for is that the child will outgrow all these symptoms without ever declaring itself, so to speak, down the road as anything more worrisome. But what I often tell families is, for now we're going to treat this like ADHD, maybe we'll treat the comorbid anxiety a little bit, maybe we'll address the social diff difficulties that tend to go along with ADHD, and we're keeping in mind that the diagnosis may become more clear in, in the future. For example, I'm on the, the school board of a school for children with um, high-functioning autism and Asperger's, where many of these children are given a diagnosis at a young age, but by the time I'm seeing them in high school or junior high, it's becoming more clear that this was just an anxiety disorder or possibly a more worrisome mood or personality dis disorder. So the frustration level for making a diagnosis for parents, I feel, is generally um, unnecessary as we just need to take a little bit of a step back and treat the child symptomatically for whatever symptom is the most prevalent and causing the most difficulties at the time.